As is Wayne Bilal with another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment. It's Friday. Another wonderful week. I can't believe February is almost done. Again, I'm Wayne Bilal. I'm a local CPA. I'm the founder of a CPA firm that's been in existence since 1991. We specialize in really two things. We, we do three things. Tax returns, tax planning. Make sure you pay less than you should. Then, well, not than you should the lowest possible amount legally allowed, and third, profit maximizing. And I'm the creator of the Smart Profit Maximizing System, which is designed to help my business owners make more money. And the T stands for taxes. Yesterday we talked about the big changes that are here for business. Today we're going to talk about the big changes that are here for individuals. Um, the law was passed in December of 2017. It's only now that most taxpayers are starting to see what's happened and how it affects them. Okay. Now, the truth is, if you've been listening to the news, four million, you know, everybody's getting smaller refunds and it's only for the rich. So the truth of the matter is only four million of taxpayers are going to have an increase in taxes according to the IRS. All right. File somewhere north of 150 million returns. That means between two and three percent are going to see a tax increase under this law, which means 97 to 98% of people will see their taxes go down. So why are we seeing articles about refunds being lower? Because the IRS adjusted the withholding tables in February so that you took more money home every pay period. All right. Well, remember what a refund is. A refund is your change. <laughs> you pay, they take the money out of your check. They give you a little bit of it back. Well, they took less out of your check. That's all. Your tax liability is all you should be looking at. Did I pay more tax last year than I am this year, or am I paying more this year than last year? 97 to 98% of taxpayers are paying less this year than they were last year. Simple. I mean, it's if you can get people to actually sit down and look at their own return, and as we explain the returns when they pick it up, they do. All right? Um, I'm going to go over some changes that were there. First of all, there's the, the new law keeps the seven brackets, but with different breaks and different rates. Okay, All the rates came down, and the brackets got a little bit bigger. So if you're in a 10% bracket, you're in it longer All right, before you hit the 15th, or whatever the next bracket is. The standard deduction nearly doubled in 2018. This is probably, if you itemize, this is probably the biggest thing you're going to see. The return just got simpler. Because a married couple went from a little over twelve to twenty-four thousand dollars. The standard deduction, remember, you take that if it's higher than your itemized deductions. Itemized deductions, uh, taxes on your house, interest on your house, medical deductions, charitable deductions are the big ones. All right. Uh, individuals sixty-five or older and the blind receive an additional deduction of thirteen thousand dollars. So if you're married and one of you is over sixty-five, instead of twenty-four thousand, it's twenty-four thousand plus thirteen hundred. Personal exemptions are gone. All right, doesn't makes life a lot easier. No more arguing over who claims the child. All right, it, well, not entirely true. Right? We're still arguing, but it's not as big a deal anymore. The child tax credit, if you have a child that's seven under seventeen, increased doubled from a thousand to two thousand dollars. Now, the difference, remember, between a credit and a deduction. The deduction lowers your taxable income. So, if I have a, a two thousand dollar deduction, or let's say a thousand dollar deduction. I multiply that times nine. Tax bracket, if I'm in a 22% tax bracket, that $1,000 is worth $220. A credit of $1,000 directly reduces the tax, which means it is worth $1,000. So the child tax credit is worth $2,000 off your tax return from birth to 16. Well, what happens to 17? I have children. I can guarantee it does not get cheaper. It's the law. It's not designed to be fair. It's designed to raise revenue. Remember that. The AGI phase out for these credits increased from two hundred thousand to four hundred thousand for couples. Sorry, increased to four hundred thousand for couples and two hundred thousand for singles. That means you can earn a lot more before you start losing these credits. For anybody who is not under seventeen, supporting a parent or a child who's in college or something like that, the new they created a new five hundred dollar credit, so you still get five hundred dollars off. It's roughly the same as getting your exemption, a little bit less actually. The home mortgage deduction was limited for mortgages taken out after December 14th. In my practice in El Paso, houses are down. If you're in other parts of the country, this will probably matter. It means that you can do only the first 750,000 of new acquisition death, death, debt on a primary resident or second resident is deductible. It used to be a million. So if I buy a house for a million dollars, 
I can only deduct the first 750,000. That means when I get my 1098 from the mortgage company, I'm going to take 75%. Uh, the math is simple. 750 over a million, 75%. You take 75% of the interest. That's all I'm allowed to deduct. There's no longer an a deduction for interest paid on home equity loans. That's not old ones. That's new ones. This is the big one that got a lot of attention, especially on the coast where the uh, local taxes are high. Um, state and local taxes, you'll hear it, SALT deductions, that's state and local taxes, is limited to $10,000. Property taxes are, already, are still fully deductible for business and business owners and owners of rental property. Okay, So don't get that confused. We're just talking about your personal house and your set vacation home maybe or whatever you got. The law eliminates all job-related moves except for military personnel. All miscellaneous deductions reported on Schedule A that are subject to the 2% AGI threshold are eliminated entirely. All right, this is a big one. This is where I'm seeing people actually owe more money. Outside salespeople, pharmaceutical reps, now a lot of companies are changing uh, to take care of that. But we're talking about business employee expenses, brokerage fees, IRA, custodial fees, hobby expenses, theft and casualty losses, except for those in a presidentially declared disaster area. Alimony deductions for post-2018 divorce decrees are gone. Good news, though, for those who receive alimony, they, they won't have to report the income. Now, if you have a divorce before 2018, um, it's still deductible and it's still income. The medical deduction limit for 2018 is reduced from 10% to 7 excuse me, to 7.5%. What that means, you add up all your medical expenses. Let's say you have $10,000 in medical expenses, but if you got $100,000, you multiply that times seven and a half, that's 7,500. You only get to deduct the amount over 7,500, or in my example, 2,500. Charitable deductions remain, and you can deduct up to 60% of your adjusted gross income. The phase out for itemized deductions for higher income taxpayers is eliminated. Like I said, estimates are. Um, this is going to eliminate 85 to 90% of itemized deductions, and that's really what I'm seeing on the early returns we're doing. The new tax law makes converting a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA is something that should be done carefully. In the past, you had till October 15th of the following year to reverse this conversion. After 2017, conversions are irreversible. So now you can't just, eh, I'll take a chance. If the market goes up or down, we'll look at it and decide. You know, you're stuck, all right? Unearned income on dependent minor children is no longer taxable at the parents' rate. It is now taxed at the trust return rates, which can be normal and normally are lower than the parents' rate, but higher than the child's rate. So uh, if you have unearned income, get with a CPA or an enrolled agent or somebody like that that knows the law. The new tax law lowers the individual alternative minimum tax rate by increasing the exemption amount to 1094 for joint returns and 70300 for singles. And the exemption starts at $1 million for couples and $500,000 for single, fam single filers and head of household. So, you know, it really get, it's starting to get that back to what it was meant to be when it first passed, just on the really top 1% or 2% of incomes. The Obamacare requirement for having insurance, in other words, the penalty for not having insurance, disappears in 19. It's still here for 18. That's a big mistake people are making. One thing to check on, though. Because of, there's an exemption if it's considered unaffordable, all right? Unaffordable is set by law. If it's more than 8%, if the lowest bronze plan you can get in your state is more than 8, 8%, 8.05, I forget exactly without looking at the worksheet, right, let's look, right around 8% of your income, you're exempt. It's considered unaffordable. We've seen returns that have four or five kids because it's so much per kid where it should have been exempt even if their income was $100,000. It's just the math, and it's because of the insurance rates going up since the Obamacare was passed. The first year we did it was like $170 per month for the lowest, the bronze plan. This last year was like over $300. So if you do 300 times 5, it's 1,500, you know, and you, times 12. I mean, you're looking way more than 8%, you know, if you got enough dependents. But some number that I, we're in the habit, if we see that there's going to be a penalty, of always checking because we no longer can assume it won't be exempt, okay? In 19, we can forget about it for a while. The 19, tax-free treatment of like kind of properties have been eliminated for all but real estate transactions. I talked about this yesterday a little bit. This had to do with tr like trading in a car, but you can still do like kind of exchanges for real estate, so that's still a very good plan. The state and gift tax exemption per person doubled from, ten from 5 million to 10 million, all right? So 
truthfully, unless you have an estate of value of more than $10 million, um, you don't need to worry about it. And it's indexed for inflation, if I remember right. Um, if you're married and you're between 10 and 20, you should get with a, a trust attorney and put in place a bypass trust. So in all practical cases, unless you, if you have less than $20 million, you should not worry about estate taxes. Another big one is if you have a business that's on your personal return, a, that the income is reported on your personal return, a sole proprietorship, a partnership, an S-Corp, don't forget the big 199A deduction, very complicated area, but it can save, you know, what it basically at its simplest, assuming you don't you know, meet all the other requirements and income phase-ins and phase-outs and all that garbage. If you made $100,000, you're only taxed on 80000 Really get with somebody that knows this law well. And even if you're over the limits, get with somebody because there's things we can try to do. All right? Hey, I don't like to talk taxes a lot on these videos because... Um, it bores a lot of people, is unfortunately. But at this time of year, we're all filing our tax returns, okay? So you should pay a little bit of attention. And when I talk about taxes, I'm usually going to be telling you things that are important and how to lower your tax ta taxes that you pay. At the end of the day, the less taxes you pay, the more money goes into your pocket. Hey, this is Wayne Blau saying until next time, have a great weekend. And let's make this our most profitable year ever and pay the lowest of taxes by law. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.